so again, I'm going to bring Dr. Haas into the room and uh, let's have a good show. So hello, everyone. I hope you can uh, hear me just fine. Uh, greetings to everyone from Toronto, Canada. You have to love technology in the year 2014. Here I am in Toronto and I know we have guests from literally all over the world and uh, this is amazing. So thank you very much for, for joining me. Um, I do want to thank John and Mindy who have done a heck of a lot of work in the background. Um, it's, uh, it's been a pleasure working with them and I'm excited about this thing. Uh, I'll give you a quick intro about myself. I'm, a, I'm an endodontist here in Toronto, Canada. I'm in private practice. Um, uh, I graduated from dental school uh, about 17 years ago and um, I was a general practitioner long enough to see my mistakes come back, to be honest with you, uh, and to be humbled. And then I went into specialty school and I graduated about 12 years ago from, uh, from endodontics. And I have a full-time private practice, but I'm also on staff at the University of Toronto and at a teaching hospital. And uh, I love lecturing and, you know, helping colleagues. Um, so this is what tonight is all about. And uh, I do want to also start off by saying that um, none of the products or items or materials uh, or instruments that I, I talk about um, are, are ones that I have any vested interest in. I have absolutely no um, uh, vested interest in any of these whatsoever. And uh, so what I say is what I mean, it's what I use, and I'll tell you what I use and why and what my tips are from my own personal uh, first-hand experience. And the videos and the slides you'll see, they're all from my own use. So um, without any uh, further ado, let me uh, you know, just uh, start moving along. And uh, like John was saying, any Q&A you may have, certainly feel free to, to um, participate, and uh, we'll get to that at the end. So one thing I'd like to start off with saying, and what I, what I start off with saying um, almost every time I give a lecture nowadays is, is this clear trend that there is in endodontics nowadays. Um, and this is something that's really taking place just within the last couple of years. Uh, in fact, I go so far as to say that if, if there's something that um, you're using nowadays that uh, maybe started using more than two years ago, in other words, if you haven't changed your endodontics within the last couple of years, believe it or not, um, you might be behind the times and no disrespect to whatever you're using or whatever company is supplying you, uh, even if it happens to be Tulsa, who, by the way, I do want to thank for supporting this. But if there's an instrument or material or a technique that you started using more than two years ago, then you really are behind the times. And that's because of this clear trend, which started about two years ago uh, in instrumentation and obturation. And that is that uh, nowadays in endodontics, in the year 2014, we require fewer steps to do to perform our endodontics. Uh, it's things have become simplified, not worse, but in other words, a simplified to be able to to have the same outcome for um, biologically, clinically, mechanically, and in doing so, it's more predictable and also uh, the outcome from the technique is better. The fewer steps you have, uh, the less things can go wrong. The easier it is to follow so on and so forth. And wave one, which is the file you're seeing uh, right here in, in this uh, slide, is really what started that trend. And um, it's really impressive what it has done. And so with that in mind, keep in mind the following. Um, I do want to go into the obturations. And so imagine at this point, we have instrumented our canal, we have medicated it, we have dried the canal, we're ready to obturate. This is what we need to keep in mind right now. On the top uh, of the slide, the two photos you see are carrier-based obturators. Uh, one on the left side is Thermophil from Tulsa. The one on the right side, as an example, is also a plastic carrier-based obturator from uh, Cybron. And then what started war on obturation years ago and is still around uh, is the Uptura gun, which you see on the bottom left, which is imagine a gun, uh, and pardon me if I'm saying things that you already know, but um, for those that aren't too familiar, it's a gun that injects warm gutta perch into the canal from a stainless steel little needle. And then on the bottom right is, is the thing that uh, when I started using this, I just fell in love with. And this has changed to me everything. Um, and that's the gutta core, which is also carrier-based warm obturation, except it's not plastic-based, it's not metal-based, it's gutta perch in the middle, meaning there's gutta perch in the middle with gutta perch on the outside. Consider it as being ice and water. It's the same material, it just handles differently, but it is all gutta percha. Now, when you're considering these um, techniques, look at this slide over here. And what you're seeing really is 
This is the traditional warm vertical obturation. You have this gun injecting gutta percha out of this little needle over here. And then you have this hot instrument that you have to use also to pack, uh, help sear off and pack down the obturation. And then you've got these over here, which are the carrier-based obturators that are plastic carrier-based. And then finally, this little thing on the, on the left side, which looks so harmless and so innocent, is, in my opinion, the most, and I'm not trying to be polite to Tulsa, uh, honestly, to me, it is the most well-engineered, um, well-produced piece of obturation technique that there is. It is all gutta percha, but when you just look at this entire slide, keep in mind, just what do you think will be the easiest to work with? This thing over here, or this thing, or this tiny little thing? Which one will be the easiest to produce warm obturation into a canal, especially in the posteriors? Uh, in those poll questions that, that you had filled out, and I thank you for that, uh, that was myself asking Tulsa to, to pull to these poll questions, which I came up with, because I'd like to know who the audience is. In many of these poll questions, I noticed that um, many people were saying that they're using cold lateral or warm vertical, meaning this technique right over here. Um, and then some people saying it would take too long. Well, that's something that is an issue with this and potentially these plastic brace carriers. Um, and, uh, and it's also an unpredictable sort of an outcome with all this, which all, all these points in mind really uh, lead me to want to talk more and more about this innocent little well-engineered obturator here on the left side, the gutta core from, from Tulsa. And um, so the next thing I want to show you is this little video. And what I want you to keep in mind is the difference in delivery between these systems. So as I play this video, and these two are in, in sync, you'll see uh, my, my view on the right side through the microscope. And try and see this is the upper first molar we're obturating. Look at this large obturator and how difficult it is to try and access this molar. Now we have this hot instrument. And keep in mind, uh, over here, we have to be very careful not to touch the back, the, the lower lip and the opposing uh, arch. Uh, it's not that tough to gain access, but it's still something to keep in mind. This is a plastic-based carrier over here, but note over here how difficult it is to obturate, especially the mesial canals, because we've got the opposing arch in the way. And the same holds true for this other uh, carrier-based obturator, which is a plastic carrier-based obturator which was phenomenal for its time, but this was an, an issue. And this was a big issue for me and for many people that it's very difficult to gain access, especially in posterior. So don't you wish you can just take this little handle over here and just break it off? Well, guess what? There you go, I just did it. And now imagine this thing as being a paper point that we're just trying to put into these canals in this molar. That's all it is. And I can go from the mesial canals to the distal to the palatal. Uh, in other words, accessibility and delivery of this warm obturator is exceptionally simple. So we'll go back to our, our slide. I want you to keep in mind, this is the year 2014. There's no reason why endo should be that complicated and that difficult and you should be turned off from doing endodontics just because, as in the poll was mentioned, uh, sometimes it takes too long or it's unpredictable. Well, imagine you have a warm obturator that's plastic-based and everything's ready, canal's instrumented, but now you can't place that tip uh, that obturator into the canal because you've got the opposing arch. And as much as you ask the patient to open their mouth, they can't open too much. And the problem now is this thing is cooling off. Before you know it, it gets very frustrating. It's taking too long. Now you got to get another core. And so with these things in mind, um, it, it, it led me more and more to, to love this new obturator that I'll be talking about short, uh, shortly. Now, in the poll questions, uh, about a, a third of the people were mentioning that um, they use warm vertical obturation. So it's interesting that about a third of you use warm vertical obturation, and yet here you are logging after hours onto a webinar talking about um, a carrier-based obturator, which to me either says you're curious to know what's going on or you're having too many frustrations um, or it's not working out too well. And uh, so for all of you that are not using uh, warm vertical obturation, I'd like to sort of uh, cover that very briefly. Now here uh, on the slide, you'll see uh, one of the more uh, recent um, instrumentation obturation systems on the market. This is the Twisted File Adapter from Cybron Endo. And I wanted to include this myself because it is, uh, again, one of the newer systems out there. What I want you to keep in mind is that, that in this case, it is recommended to use the same, uh, the corresponding gutta percha points to the files that were used, whether it's 04 taper or 06 taper. And I agree with that completely. You know, it's always better when, when the two and the instrumentation and the obturation is in sync. 
But keep in mind, uh, many people do recommend using a narrow taper so as to somehow preserve some dentin. As far as I'm concerned, the difference between an 04, 06, or 08, um, 08 taper instrumentation, practically speaking, it's not going to be a big, big difference in terms of the structural integrity of the tooth. But the reality is that we need to have a greater taper in order to make your uh, medication easier of the canal, in order to be able to get your, your lubricant there and to get, make your obturation much easier. The narrower the taper, as you can see in my hand, the narrower the taper of the canal, the more difficult it is to get in there. The wider the taper, the more easy it is to get um, your obturation to length. So in this case, if you're using an 04 taper uh, of the instrumentation, obturation with this injection gun over here, for argument's sake, we'll call it, and this hot instrument becomes a little bit more difficult. So what I'd like to do, uh, and as I do very often, is talk to you about traditional warm vertical obturation. And this is something that I'll try and simplify as much as I can, but believe me, it is very technique sensitive and is perhaps the reason why so many of you tonight are joining me for uh, a webinar on uh, carrier-based obturation. So uh, I'll go through it by step by step, and, and whether it's, it's you know, any of these techniques from Cybron or Tulsa, also it's the Calamus system from Tulsa Dental, um, this is the, to simplify the, the way to do, to follow this procedure. So you get, once you're instrumented your canal, you're going to go ahead and you're going to take your master cone and you're going to try and fit that master cone to length, maybe about half a millimeter from working length. Make sure you have tug back. Really important to have tug back at the apex because if you don't, you're going to have a nightmare coming uh, very shortly. Now imagine that cone is fitted and there's tug back and the tug back has to be apical, not at the middle, not at the coronal. It's got to be apical uh, in the apical third. That's the case. You can go in there. Now you're going to take your uh, hot tip and you're going to pre-measure this hot tip to uh, about five millimeters with the rubber stopper of your working length because you're going to have to then sear off this gutta percha uh, at about five millimeters from length. Now you're going to go in there and you're going to coat the cone with some sealer, place it to, at length. And at this point, all you want to do, we've just started, all you want to do is sear off this gutta percha around the CEJ, just that then you can start your really warm vertical obturation. However, even though we've just started, this is where time after time I find people having issues with this. And I'll, I'll take you to this uh, little video over here where you see in this, uh, in this radiograph, we've got a purchase that I've been fitting in here. And as you'll see in a moment in this video, uh, so I've got my master cone, hopefully with tug back. I'm trying to sear it off with a hot instrument at the CEJ. And what happens very often to many people, and I see it happening to my students, as, as we try and sear it off, the whole cone comes out. We've just started this technique. We've barely even started uh, any of the important steps, and already this thing has uh, come out. So now we've got to go back in there, and we've got to try and fit another cone in there. And again, we've got to make sure that there's tug back at the apical part. Otherwise, you can keep repeating this frustrating step. So let's say we went in there. We're able to um, get our cone in there. We're able to sear it off at the CJ. Now we have to take our hot instrument and we want to uh, uh, basically try and heat it up all the way to length. And I'll show you in this sort of demo in the, in the live camera. If I'm holding this pen over here, I have to have my finger on this hot instrument and then press it down hot, 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 hot. I'm going to length. Once I'm at, at let's say, about five millimeters from my working length, I take my finger off, which lets this hot instrument cool off. Now I pack it down just a little bit, maybe about half a millimeter. And then to, get, to remove it, I have to activate it again, so now it's going to be hot, turn it maybe a quarter of the way, bring it out, hopefully nothing else comes out with it and the rest stays at the apex, and now we'll go back to our, our video, thank you John, um, here I am, now now I'm trying to make that step look very simple, believe me, it's not, uh, especially if you're not doing that many endos, and, and I should say from the poll, and again, thank you so much for filling that out, I can see that many of you don't do a ton of endos a week which is what I would expect from general practitioners. If you're an endonist and you do tons of endos in, in uh, a week or in a day, this procedure should be easy just because practice makes perfect. If you're not doing a ton of endos during the week, then all of these steps don't become much more complicated. Um, and so let's say now we've seated off at around the apical four or five millimeters. We're gonna go in with this hot instrument and now we have to backfill this canal. So we have this injection gun that's gonna uh, backfill the canal to the CJ. Now keep in mind, this gun over here has to make contact with the apical four or five millimeters of the remaining gutta percha. If it's not, then unfortunately, you're gonna have a void left behind. Also, if this canal happens to be very curved, then very often my, my words to you are good luck trying to get it past that curvature of the root. 
So, so far we're good. Imagine now we're going in with a plugger. We have to pre-fit this plugger and uh, try and condense it apically. But again, you have to fit the right plugger. If you've come this far, what we do then is we go and we try and coat this canal with a little bit more sealer. Now the next step is we're going to backfill this again, coronally with the gun. And you have to make sure that it is making contact with the apical remaining gutta percha. If it's not, then you're going to have a void uh, and you're not going to be happy with this. Before you know it, you'll be thinking, do I retreat it? Do I not? Just You don't want to have that sort of uncertainty or gut feeling that you're not very comfortable with it. Backfill this canal. And as you're backfilling with this gun, as you're backfilling, you're also pressing apically as it goes coronally. So we continue this. We keep condensing apically now with a different size plugger. And essentially my point is, just to recap, look at all these steps. And I'm really trying to make it sound simple. And the reality is, Unfortunately, it's not. And again, if you're an endodontist or if you ask your endodontist, well, what do you use? What do you recommend? Most likely, this is a technique they'll say. If you ask an endodontist to, including myself, to do uh, an MOD preparation, it'll probably take me two hours to do it. It'll take you five minutes. It'll take me two hours to do. And, and with that in mind, th this whole presentation is really for me to try and make your life more, more easy, more predictable with something that, you know, there isn't a huge learning curve. Um, and so back to this technique with, with this warm vertical obturation, this is what I was talking about. You're going to get voids over here, void, void. Uh, you're going to get plugger tracks, uh, unfortunately. And in this case, you can see these are fairly straight canals. Imagine you have a canal which is very curved. This is not even that curved. And already you see void here, void there. Because for all you know, that hot tip of the injection gun, whether it be from this Cybron gun, gun or this Tulsa uh, sort of warm gutter percha gun, it is very difficult to try and get it to go past the curvatures and make contact with the remaining gutta percha in the canal. So that's one way to do it. And the alternative is the following. And quite simply, uh, let me ask you the following. Well, you be the judge. Wouldn't it be easier, faster, and more predictable to do the following? So I'll show you this obturation over here. Okay. And here's a maxillary central incisor, which needed root canal treatment. And you look at this anatomy, and this is something that I'm sure all of us should be able to do. And uh, what I'd like to do is, is sort of lead you to this video. So from that one uh, central incisor, let me show you what it takes to obturate that canal. And you be the judge of how easy or difficult it is. So there's the warm obturation tip that we have. I'm placing it inside the canal over here. I'm counting 5,000, 6,000, 7,000. That's it. That's the key. On the right side, you see the view through my microscope. Believe it or not, uh, we'll go back to, to the slides. Believe it or not, the only catch that there is in this case was, can you put that in there within seven seconds approximately? Um, it sounds so simple, that's all it takes. I'll bring it to another uh, example, another video of another case. And we'll, we'll go into this. And what you're seeing right now on your screen is the, the uh, oven in this case. And and I'll show you, by the way, the, the maxillary central. Let me show you the before and after. Remember that video I just showed you a moment ago where all I said is I'm counting 5,000, 6,000, 7,000. In other words, within seven seconds, that tiny little obturator created this over here. And let me show you in this after. So as harmless as this thing looked, you probably thought, nah, straightforward canal. Just with the maxillary central incisor, look at how nicely within seven seconds it filled this anomaly over here. Look at how nicely it filled this apical delta with sealer cuffs. There's no way anyone can say, well, it was too quick, it was too easy. No, it can't be. There's a catch. It's not good. No one can argue that we did not fill this canal system, not just the main canal, but the canal system completely, including lateral canals, apical delta, and all these little anomalies, and within seven seconds. I I'm not trying to sound silly and almost like I'm trying to sell you cars after you know, with an infomercial at night. But that really is the case. That was a very straightforward case. Well, let me show you another case over here. I'll show you this lower first molar. There's the before, and there's the after, and let me show you how we got to this. Okay, so no one's going to say when you look at this obturation, well, Menor, you know what? You kind of cut corners. You instrument it to a tiny size at the apex. It's not filled well. There's a lateral canal, by the way, right there. No, there's, there's got to be a cat. So let me show you this case. And let me show you down here in the lower left uh, image, 
just what, what we've been able to accomplish. Look at how nicely I've obturated the two mesial canals, the distal, and even an isthmus right there that's between the two mesial canals. So here's the video of, of this lower molar case. And you'll see first over here, and this, these are synchronized views. The top is the you know, extraoral view, and the bottom is the view through my microscope. There's the obturator, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000. That's it. We're done. Period. No, no gimmicks, no silliness. That's it. Seven seconds. The, the only catch here is if you place it in four seconds, it won't flow as well. If you place it in 30 seconds, obviously, it won't flow well because it's going to start cooling off. We're all doctors here. You know, we went to university long enough that I'm sure we can all count from, from zero to, to seven in no time, and it should not be rocket science, but that's what it takes. So it sort of leads me to my next point. What's, what's the catch? And I'm not trying to sound silly, and uh, I'm not trying to sound like it's a gimmick, but literally here's the catch. If you can insert a paper point into the canals without touching the walls of your endo axis, and if you can do that in the seven seconds I've mentioned to you, then you can do this. And let me show you this video. This is something you and I see every day. Here's a lower molar that's been instrumented. Now we're ready to dry the canals and I'm putting this paper point in each canal. Now notice when you're putting in your paper points to dry the canals, you don't go in there and you touch the floor and you buckle it and then you gotta go into another one and you buckle it and we try another one. The reality is you can put it in there just like I'm showing you with absolute ease and without having to touch the walls of this axis. That's all it takes. I kid you not. Now imagine this paper point that I'm putting in there is a warm gutta percha. No different. It just happens to be a nicely engineered paper point. So that that's you know that that's point number one. And uh, you know we'll show you this this. Uh, uh, let me see if he'll show you this video over here. Um, Actually, Dr. Haas, this is the uh, these are the videos we just showed, and I wanted to ask if you would maybe click on a few of the questions in the Q and A pod. There's been a few coming in, just to see if some uh, you could address real quickly, maybe. You know, let me. See. I think if you click on them, it'll expand them, so you can see what the. Uh, I, I can't thank you enough for you guys participating. It's, it's really I'm used to lecturing in front of a live audience where they raise their hand, so um, it, it's really exciting to be able to do it this way. Let me just uh, try and flee. There's a lot of questions here. Yeah. And you'll need to repeat them because they can't see. Uh, the crowd can't see the question. So if you'll repeat it and then address it would be great. Okay. So one, one good question uh, that someone was asking, and, and I'll just mention the first name. This is Todd. How should gutta core be inserted into the, uh, into the oven, that is? Um, and, uh, well, we'll show you. It is, as, let me see if I can show you over here with the, the marker. Here's the oven. Um, great question, very simple in that uh, what you want is to have it hanging off the plastic handle, not, not the uh, rubber stopper. I often see people where they try and hang it off the rubber stopper, but no, you actually want it to hang off the plastic handle. So in this case, imagine it's the black one. And you'll see a little bit better in the, uh, in the videos that I'll show you. So that's, uh, that's a, a great question over there. Uh, you know, I'll try and, and sort of move along, but it's a good question at this point. Uh, so in terms of uh, that's catch number one, uh, where quite simply uh, you just have to put in that warm obturator inside the canal without touching the walls, which is exactly what you do for paper points. So this is nothing new for us. Catch number two, uh, as simple as uh, it might sound, is, and I'm not trying to sound silly, so pardon me for that, but can you match the color of your obturator with your file? So let's say... You know, I happen to use this red wave one, which is called a primary wave one file. Well, guess what color Optria would have to use? Um, this is not rocket science, and I love it when things are simplified. And all I have to use is, well, the corresponding red operator. If I happen to use the large one, the black one, well, I would just use the black uh, one. If I happen to be using uh, another file, uh, let's say the, the, the black, for simplicity's sake, uh, pro taper gold or whatnot, uh, that's fine. I would just use the black uh, gutta core. So it's very, very simple. So those are the two catches. Believe it or not, those are the only two um, uh, catches that there is to this. And so to me, that's one of the reasons why uh, this warm obturation technique has become such a game changer um, because over the years, Tulsa has really listened to the uh, frustrations, including from people like myself who use plastic carrier-based obturators such as Thermophil, 
and had issues. So they said, no problem. This is, you know, uh, year 2014. We can do this. We can make it happen. And we came out with the following. So here's, here's the sort of like the step-by-step -step in performing this. So first you want to go in there. You've instrumented the canal. You've dried it. Uh, what you want to use is you want to confirm your length and you can use a size verifier file which comes with every pack and you'll see if you have a pack of these obturators it comes with a file inside which is a full-fledged nickel titanium file uh, which you can sterilize and reuse so you put in your file you take your radiograph and at the same time um, what, what uh, then you want to go on towards is make sure that um, you want to place your sealer so in terms of how much sealer you place in there, and we'll show you a video shortly, you place very little sealer. How much? Less than what you think. Let's put it that way. And then uh, how long do you, have to, uh, do you have in order to place the obturator from the orifice to the apex? Remember I said approximately seven seconds. That, that's, that's the catch. And uh, you can see over here, actually a good question about how you place it. It's actually hanging off the handle, not the rubber stopper. And then I'll also show you in a video um, how to remove this carrier. So you've got this carrier over here. If you're a thermophil person, I know about a third of you are carrier-based obturator uh, people uh, from the poll that we did. If you're a plastic carrier-based obturator uh, clinician, this is where it gets extremely frustrating because how do you remove this plastic? Well, uh, got a court took care of that issue. So let me show you these videos uh, for this case. And the first one is about, well, how much sealer do I place in there? You'll see in this video uh, less than what you think. So if, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll, yeah, there you see in this video over here, very little, maybe the last three, four millimeters of the paper point. You put it almost to working length, and essentially I'm just brushing or painting the walls of the canal. We'll go on to the next video, which is, so that's very, very, very simple. We'll go on to the next video, and what that video shows you is how it's critical to make sure that it takes about seven seconds. So I'll count 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, and there I am at length. Okay, that's it. 7,000 seconds. If it's 6,000, 8,000, not the end of the world, I just want you to try and remember the 7,000. And, and um, Sergio Cutler, who's a phenomenal clinician, wonderful endodontist, he's got this brilliant uh, idea of just saying count elephants. If that, that makes you count a little bit slower, one elephant, two elephants, three elephants, um, go ahead. And when you're doing this, in fact, when you're first doing this, uh, performing this technique, I would even recommend that you have your assistant count with you. Now, my patients, your patient might start, what's going on over here? How come you guys are counting out loud? But really, you do it once, you will remember this. And so it takes me to my next point, um, which is the, the frustration you'll see in this video on the bottom of how do you remove these carriers? Well, remember this over here. This pink thing is gutta percha. It's not plastic. Remember I said it's like ice and water? Well, the pink is the ice and the orange is the water. In other words, the gutta, both are gutta percha. I personally like to use uh, a spoon to, to do this, a sharp spoon um, excavator, so you don't have to go out there and buy any new instruments. You don't have to use a burr. In fact, I recommend you don't use a burr, but just you know, let this gutta percha set for maybe about half a minute. Some people even blow some cold air at this. And then to remove the excess gutta percha, which is in here, it's actually quite simple. Uh, what I do over here is just remove it with that spoon. Again, not rocket science whatsoever. When you're removing the excess gutta percha, um, what uh, I recommend is just to apply very firm pressure laterally and apically. And if, if at this point some of the gutta percha comes out coronally, don't worry. It's, the sealer hasn't set. Just press it back in there with the spoon, and you're done. That's it. You don't need pluggers or anything like that. Uh, in terms of cleaning the floor, I'll show you. I'll fast forward over here. Uh, let me see if I can fast forward to, pardon me, how you can do it. I To just clean at the very end, I lightly brush the, the pulp chamber right over here, as you can see, with a large round burr on a slow speed handpiece. I'm not removing dentin. I'm just cleaning the floor. And, and look at this obturation over here. We've got the, the isthmus even between the two mesial canals obturated. And also note that this is all gutta percha. There's no sealer in here. There's no, uh, any, it's not one of those techniques where there's a lot of sealer and a tiny little gutta percha point. Thank you, John. We'll go back. Um, but one of the things I love about this, it is entirely gutta percha. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit of sealer that's in there. You notice how little sealer I use to paint the walls. So that's a sort of like the step-by-step. The step. So again, here's the before. 
Here the af here's the after of a simple case. Imagine what you might find with molars, premolars, if you find this with, in with incisors, and here's the molar. Now, Dr. Uh, Austin, hey, could I interrupt one more time? There are please, a ton please. of there's a ton of great questions. Would you mind poking through a few more of those? I would a absolutely with this. Um, maybe peek at some of those. If you click them, they'll expand and then share a couple of those with us. Maybe just a couple, actually, and then we'll move so, on. Someone was asking, uh, do you pre-coat canals with sealer? Absolutely. So, how much sealer? Very, very little sealer. Um, and let me see. Hang on. Yeah, we do have a heck of a lot of a lot of questions. How is gutta percha? Very good question. How is the, the gutta percha in this kept from extruding through the apex with the gutta core technique? Excellent, excellent question. Um, first and foremost, as with any technique, uh, any warm technique, you got to make sure you respect the apical constriction. You're not going to go in there with your master file and go out the apex and, and blow open your constriction. Um, so if you respect the apical constriction, maybe you go out with a number 10 to recapitulate and get your working length. I see no reason why you'd have any problem with this. Uh, in fact, one of the things I love about uh, the gutta core versus the, uh, let's say, the plastic carrier systems, and, and as an example, and I say with all due respect to Cybron and to Tulsa, with their plastic carrier-based off traders, the problem there is you've got a plastic, and no matter what, you're going to take that plastic and you're going to fit it into the canal no matter what to length, and whether you're, you're, um, you have room for, for anything or not, you're going to be shoving that to the apex and you're going to be pushing out the apex whatever gutta percha might be there. Gutta core, on the other hand, because it's all gutta percha, if you're applying too much pressure, if it meets resistance, if it converges with another canal apically, then any extra pressure is pushed back out coronally. That is phenomenal and very important. And that's a, a key reason why I find with gutta core, there's much less extrusion apically than there is with the carrier-based obturation systems, or even, believe it or not, with the warm vertical obturations, because what if you're not that comfortable with it? What if you, you push that plugger into the canal just a little bit too much and now you've extruded it? The way the gutta percha, the viscosity of it, the way it flows, the way it's engineered, too much pressure and it extrudes coronally. And that, that gives me a lot of peace of mind. Now, if I get a little bit of sealer puff, not the end of the world. I'm okay with that. Uh, but that, that's a uh, phenomenal uh, question over there. So I'll try and go to a few more questions uh, as we come along. That's a great question. So. Back to the 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 step by step, if I may, uh, the canal the canal drying over here. So you've dried the canal, and keep in mind as you're doing this, this consider it as being your your dress rehearsal for this warm obturator. So that paper point that you're putting in there to dry, imagine in your mind, it's not a gutta percha. It's 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 a paper point. That's all it is. Uh, so back to the size verifiers. Remember I said once the canal is instrumented, it's dried. What you want to do now is you want to take the size verifier, and it's this little thing over here, okay? And it comes with the corresponding colors, okay? And the nice thing is it's a full-fledged nickel titanium file that comes with each one of these packs over here. So don't throw it out, uh, reuse it. And by the way, on this little thing, if you look closely, you, maybe it's tough to see you know, on the internet, but there's little black notches on it. The first one is 18, then 19, then 20 millimeters, then 22. Uh, Tulsa, I have to say, is brilliant in, in doing this, where this is my ruler. Those little notches that you might see over there. There you go. You see those little black lines. So uh, those notches represent the length, 18, 19, 20 millimeters, and the same notches are present on the gutta core. Okay? And that's what you use for your length. You don't use a ruler. So back to, to our uh, little slide over here, what I want you to make sure you realize is that as you're putting the size verifier in there and you're taking a radiograph to confirm your length, um, you also want to put it in there and bring it out of the canal and have the, the tip of the file completely clear of dentinal debris. You want these fluids completely clean because if there are any uh, dentin debris here at the very bottom, as you see with the green arrow, then it'll prevent you from being able to fill to length. And in fact, in the poll that I, I asked Tulsa to, to uh, 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 list before the webinar started, one of the, the main issues that people have had was spending too much time with their obturations, and the other one is not being able to fill to length. This is one of the reasons why it happens, because you don't clear the apical third of the canal, you have dentin debris in there, and that dentin debris will stop the obturation from going to length. So imagine we've gone there, we've dried the canals, we put this thing in there, uh, the, the size verifier, it comes out, the tip of the size verifier, the very 
tip of it is all clear of any uh, dent in debris, and we're good to operate. What it means to me is that now you've got a clear path all the way from the coronal part all the way to the apex to be able to operate mm -hmm. to length. So now we're ready to operate. Uh, pardon me, now we're ready to put our sealer. How much sealer do you put? You put less than what you think, and it's just the last few millimeters of the sealer uh, of the of the paper point that we're going to put sealer on, and we showed you that in in the video before. So again, from this pre-op to this post-op, okay, uh, where you get this little bit of sealer out the apex, but look at how the rest, how nicely the rest is filled. Um, how do you do this? Well, let me show you this videos, okay. And we'll start off with this one over here. So let's dry the canals. And again, this to me is a dress rehearsal for you placing your gutta core in there. So within seven seconds, I want you to take that paper point and just place it inside without touching the walls, which I know you do. I know everyone does. Um, but this is a dress rehearsal for, for your operation. We'll go on to our next video over here. And... And let me show you, oh, pardon me, actually, no, we'll go back to this video, if you don't mind, John, uh, to the original one. And what you can see over here is as I'm taking, thank you, the size verifier out, see how the flutes are completely clear of dent and debris. So you just use this as if it's a regular nickel titanium hand file. And now we're going to go on to the sealer placement. How much sealer do you put in there? Less than what you think. You just want to put some at the very tip. You're going to coat these walls with sealer, go almost to working length. You can also use a file if you want to. I just like to keep things simple, just paper points, coat the walls. And again, I want to operate with gutter percha. I don't want to operate with sealer. So we'll go on to our next slide over here. And in cases where, uh, let's say we're operating multiple canals, what I like to do is place paper points within the canals I'm not operating. And there's one paper point there. There's another one that we just removed. Let me see if I can show you that again. So as soon as I take out that paper point, then right away there I have a nice clear path to operate that canal with nothing in the way. The next canal I would operate with this one. So it's sweet and simple. Um, now what we'll do, John, is we'll go on to back to our slides, please. So that's a tip that I have. That's in case you're worried that you may have sealer um, going over or overflowing to the other canals, let's say in molars. And so I like to use paper points that I cut at the orifice, and we'll go back to our slides over here. And uh, it's a tip that I've just used myself over time. And let me see, while we're waiting uh, for... Dr. Sir, did yeah, you want to do the video at the top that was the synced one? I don't think yes, you looked at that yes, one yet. Yes, thank you. See, there's okay. a reason why you here. <laughs> thank you very much, John. So uh, the video on the top here, uh, you'll see quite simply how we're delivering the warm uh, operator into the prepared canal. So there's the, the oven on the top. We placed it hanging off the black handle. And this is for this lower molar over here. In a moment, you'll see the lower video in sync with the upper one. The lower one is the view through the microscope, which is exactly what I see. So we take it out. <clears throat> we grab it by the handle with one hand, grab it with a cotton plier in the other at the working length that you want. And this is me. I just break off the handle. Now it's a nice, simple, easy operation. And how many seconds do you have to place it in there? Roughly seven. So a Sergio Cutler would say 2,000, two elephants, three elephants, four elephants, five elephants, six elephants, seven elephants. That's it. We're done. Fully obturated uh, canal. And how do you remove it? Well, we just use a spoon excavator, a nice sharp spoon excavator. That's really all that, that is needed. And so we'll go back to our, to our slides and sort of move things along. And it brings me to the following, which are little tips that I've learned personally from using this technique. And it includes the following. One is, as I showed you in the video, break off the handle and only use cotton pliers. If I'll show you in this video over here, keep in mind, here's a paper point, okay? Do you use this, do you grab your paper points with your finger or do we grab our paper points with a cotton plier? Which one is easier? Do we put this thing, this paper point in there with our fingers or like this? Which one gives us more tactile? If I use this obturator, do I, is it easier with these big fat fingers of mine or just with, with me doing this? Okay, so you be the judge. To me, it's pretty simple. So uh, the other thing is also the rubber stopper that, that's on these gutta cores. Once you get comfortable with this, the less uh, you have on that gutta core, I find the easier it is. I would remove the, the rubber stopper. That's just me. So here you see uh, an example. There's the rubber stopper. 
which you could use just as you do any rubber stopper on a file. You can cut that off, remove it, and what I like to do is actually just remove it, and I use these little markers over here, these little notches, 18, 19, 20 millimeters, 22, 24, no different than what we have on our uh, files that I just showed you. Um, and to me, that's my ruler. You do not use a ruler to measure your length over here. Do not use a ruler. Use these markers. That's the true length. That's meant to be there for a reason. And then to block out other canals, I mentioned earlier, you can place these uh, paper points in the other canal. So if we're operating this canal over here, I'll use paper points that I, that I cut off at the orifice or at the occlusal table. And it'll bring me to these videos over here, which, which is exactly what I talked about. So here in the top, you'll see me uh, removing the rubber stopper. Again, this is optional. You don't have to do it. I just find this a lot easier. There's one more uh, 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 visual obstruction in the way. So you can remove that. And now what I want you to do is look at these little markers over here on these. That's 18, 19, 20 millimeters. If my canal is instrumented to 20 millimeters, I'm going to use the third marker, 18, 19, 20. And my cotton pliers are going to grab it right over here just above the 20 millimeter mark. Now we'll move on to the other uh, slide. And this is to remove the handle. So grab this gutter core with one hand, grab it with the cotton pliers, and there you go. I just broke this thing off. Again, is it now what's easier, having a big fat handle on the uh, other end of this uh, gutta percha or uh, an injectable gun or just carrying that little thing? And then once you're done obturing one canal, then what I recommend is, you know, if, if you have multiple canals to obturate, then place paper points in the other canals. Once you're done obturating one, you remove the paper point from the other. But here I am just placing these paper points in the canals. And notice how you don't see it at the occlusal table. So I like to do it just below the occlusal table, and this will block out any of the canals from uh, any gutta percha that maybe will overflow from this canal over to that. Although I got to hand it to, thank you, John. So I got to hand it to Tulsa because uh, that is even less of an issue nowadays because um, there's even less gutta percha to overflow in these canals with the newest generation of gutta core. So thank you, Tulsa, for listening to um, to you know our, 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 our comments and, and clinical suggestions and actually continuously improving this product. So uh, it brings me to one of my last points, which is misconceptions about gutta core. So we're almost done here. I'm not going to keep it for too, too much long, and then we'll get to the Q&A. So the first point is gutta core can't be retreated easily. Couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, another thing that I hear sometimes that frustrates me personally is you can't obturate curved canals. And then the other thing is post-space preparation, which is very difficult with gutta core. It's gutta percha. It, it should be very easy to make post-space preparations, and I'll show you with videos how easy it is. And then uh, technically some would say, well, it's more difficult than the warm obturation with the gun, and you need also more, more of a setup and more armamentarium than you would with the traditional technique. Well, let's go and answer this. And by the way, the reason why, why going back to this, the reason why I personally want to include this so much is because I get very frustrated when I hear people commenting on gutta core, and then I ask them, well, have you ever used it? And I'll bet my money that they have not used it, and yet they're very opinionated on it, including some of my colleagues, with all due respect. So if you ask someone for an opinion on gutta core, please also ask them, have you used gutta core? And if they've also used thermophil or any plastic carrier-based obturation, even better, because then they have an even better opinion. But unless they have an, uh, uh, they've used it clinically, I don't, with all due respect, I don't care to hear that opinion of theirs. So it, I'll, I'll just like to cover some of these misconceptions. Imagine you want to obturate this curvature over here, which I obturated. Okay. Now it's going to be exceptionally difficult to go this far down the canal and get your your warm stainless steel uh, obturation tip, that hot tip, to go this far, make a contact with the remaining apical gutta percha, and then backfill it. This is where you're very likely to have voids and whatnot. Um, but with gutta core, it's not an issue. It's all gutta percha. Okay. The next point is uh, it's more difficult to again to obturate uh, curved canals. Uh, I should say because of the the tips of these uh, stainless steel instruments here with this uh, gun with this hot tip, and even if you use as I, as you see over here these nickel titanium uh, pluggers, they're still going to have a hard time going all the way beyond uh, a curvature, and that's where you're going to have very likely these voids that you see in this radiograph. The next uh, misconception is that post-space preparations are very difficult. 
for those of you, for the third of you in this, in this uh, webinar, and it's a lot of you, uh, that are using warm vertical obturation, you'll say, oh yes, but I can make post faces very easily. Well, wait till you use gutta core. Remember, it's all gutta percha. So if you can make a post face in a gutta percha obturation, you can do it in, in gutta core also. So I'll show you a video shortly of how easy it was to make this post preparation in this maxillary canine. So some would say, well, it's more technically difficult. Remember this, uh, this animation I showed you of the 15 simplified steps? And this is not easy. I, I will put my money on it. When I give a course or people have taken this course, some would say, oh, but I've been doing this for years and years. Well, okay, if you have me as an endodontist to do MODs day in and day out and day out, sure, I can do it very easily. Um, practice makes perfect. But I don't expect you guys to do a million endos in a day and even if you do, it's still way more technically difficult than what gutta core is. So it's very easy to get these, these uh, uh, voids and these plugger tracks and whatnot. And, uh, and the other issue is that gutta core needs actually less uh, of a setup than what you see over here. Let me show you, you know, with what I'm holding in my hand, all you need, believe it or not, for gutta core is the following. You're going to have your obturator over here. Okay, and there's your obturator, which by the way comes already, if you, if you want to pan into my mug shot over here, John, I'll show you, you have this gutta core over here, and then you have this, this uh, nickel titanium that comes in the kit. Aside from this, and the oven that you're going to use over and over and over again, all you really need is cotton pliers, and I'm pretty sure everyone has this in their office, so you don't need to buy anything new. And then the other thing is you need a spoon excavator to remove any of the excess gutta percha. Again, this spoon excavator is what you would use for carriers removal. So again, I don't think you need to buy any of this um, for your uh, obturation, which is really nice. So the setup is very, very, very small, and it'll take us to these videos. Some would say you can't really retreat these. Well, in this case, you'll see in this video, imagine you put your obturator for whatever reason it didn't go well. All you have to do in this case is, what I recommend is I take a headstrom, and I turn it clockwise, I just engage a little bit of the gutta core, pull that thing out, and I'll show you in a moment what I just took out. This is all gutta percha, okay? You'll see there's a, the core in the middle, the pink, and the warm gutta percha on the outside, all of it removed in one shot. And the sealer hasn't set. Now, if let's say a sealer has set and you want to retreat it, well, if you can retreat gutta percha, you can retreat this. So it is a non-issue. Next, I'll show you how easy it is to make post phase preparations. You do not need to buy uh, post paste uh, drills. In this case, I'm going to be using uh, a piezo reamer. If you want to use a post paste drill, be my guest. It is all got to purchase. So go right ahead and make your post paste preparation as you wish. Here's the maxillary canine that I'll show you uh, how easy it is to make that post space in there. It, it's essentially, as far as I'm concerned, it is a no brainer. You may have to wait maybe half a minute to a minute just to let the, the got to purchase seal fully. I find you rarely ever need to wait longer than that. And there we go. We have our, we have our uh, post space prepared. And um, go back to our slide. We're on Q&A very, very shortly. Um, very, very easy to, to perform this. So very quickly, our author is the same. Absolutely not. Uh, with these two systems over here, they're very different. They're based off trees. I don't care what manufacturer makes a base carrier retreat. They're more difficult to prepare post preparations. In fact, now you have post paste uh, uh, drills for this. Um, way more difficult to access posteriors. Pre and molars become. Some people with small stat, and I may be bent off by plastic, creative, and you know, you want to. Look for a, a more different, be my guest. Uh, there's no reason here. 2,000 things have been engineered so nicely. This thing, thing again, and if you want a pen in there, I want, it's all warm. And what do I do? Break. Now, isn't it easier to obturate this than any of the guns or anything else that you might have? Uh, that's to break that off. While still having all the purchase base carrier brilliant. Um, so, so remember it in the beginning. One of my opening slides was, and this is 
I'm not trying to patron me sincerely saying this. Uh, thanks to the we can do we can perform a canals in the year 20 steps. It is much more more simple, predictable, and the outcome is way better. So no one is going to come. Your operations didn't look right. I don't think, I think anyone's going to argue that fully operated. The canal, the entire canal system, with this thing, if it took me only seven seconds to do it, sorry, you know, if you want to get coffee and be my guest, but uh, uh, that's ended on 14. And remember, if I, like I said, if you're, if you're operating, doing your end of the way you did more than two years ago, you're kind of behind. So being able to break off these, these handles is, is Something that makes it easier nowadays, especially in these posteriors. So I'll I thank you so much, so much for your time. I'm here. My little guys retired themselves, but what I'd like to do is go on to some of the. the I thank, thank you for for hanging. So uh, so let me uh, let me just make yes, a couple quick technical points. Been outstanding, obviously, and. Uh, um, I, there's tons, so I appreciate it. I want to give you time to get to reach those. You may need kind of to the top. I think we've skipped over. Click on each, uh, if you don't mind, so we try to address. They're still coming in, which is great. Um, for those who may not have questions unanswered or to get off for any reason, I've brought the quiz uh, pod back. Wants to grab that. If you click on that quiz and the file share, Pod and down to help us with uh, sending that quiz and the evaluation back in. We really appreciate things here. Um, I say maybe don't click on the the meeting's over because it'll actually open a browser immediately. But those are some share time technical videos, more on demand and free C webinars for you to consider, and also our live course calendar. This is a big part of all of our education. So. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Haas to go ahead and deal with Q&A. I know he's going to stay on as long as uh, it goes on. But those that may not, uh, thank you very, very much for attending. Thank you very much, John. We literally have people from all over the world. I saw the Canada, America, Europe. Um, you got to love technology. So thank, thank you for from. John and uh, uh, so some some really good questions. Uh, Noel touched the access walls, walls when you're putting in your your believe it or not if you just barely nick the access it's really not the end. so I would still still go ahead and and to, to operate knife let's say you, then and I wouldn't even bother going into the canal I would just but this will be an issue more because it's the first one or two times. Um, you'll just handle it like it is a paper view. Okay. No, nothing more you do. Uh, someone else was asking. Yourself. Uh, okay. Someone else was asking. Um, what if you use? Very, Ed, Edward was asking. Would, would
track of answers, you know, by checking them that day, right? I'm going to I'm going to point you to a couple. I'm going to point you to a couple doctor way up top. It may be that I check marked one that hasn't been answered. There's one by uh, Rashik, I believe it is, about an air bubble. About the third question down. Do you see that? And I hope I said his name right.
I think, Doctor, if you'll just, if you'll look for uh, the ones that are unchecked, that'll be the ones that we probably still need to try to look at. Yeah. What it means. Um, also, someone's asking, do I use 100% with the lecture? But I use 50 percent and patients start wondering, what's this? Are you using bleach? And, you know, you get these weird questions. Use 50% uh, strength into that whole discussion. And um, good question from Steve. Uh, the bladder uses wet setting on three in the heating unit. Most of the optrade black, you can use setting number one. As long as you have the, I personally don't recommend the oven. Let's say if you have thermofuel gut a core, uh, you want to get this new generation of ovens. For the smaller size or medium, I use setting one. Sometimes for a larger size, I use setting number two. But I've never found myself using setting number three, unless you're using a massive gutta core, again, in that huge central size where you're going up to 80 or so. Um, a good question from uh, Wilson. What ha happens if you meet resistance when inserting the gutta core as you keep pushing it apically? You might remember in the beginning of my presentation, I said one of my favorite things about gutta core is the fact that if you do place too much pressure, because it's all gutta percha, instead of the plastic carriers, where as you, you're going to make, make that, pla you're going to shove that plastic here in there. You're going to make that thing fit and you're going to take up that space no matter what. And then be more likely to extrude stuff out the apex with gutta core, the way it flows, if there's too much resistance, it'll just fill coronally. So in other words, let's say if you have a canal that verge, that merges apically, you filled one canal and now this one needs to go in there. Well, it's going to meet resistance right over, right over here at this point, And it's not going to go further. A plastic carrier may have gone further, and now you're pushing stuff out the apex. Gutta core, when it meets resistance, even though you keep pressing apically, it's going to extrude it coronally, which is brilliant because now you have less, uh, a much reduced chance of extrusions and, and all those sort of uh, unwanted uh, sort of accidents. Um, someone was asking a, a question. What's the problem with voids and plugger tracks? Okay, then... Um, I'm not sure if you're being sarcastic with that or not. Well, um, you want to fill the canal system. There are studies showing that one of the biggest reasons for, 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 for root canal failures is, in fact, uh, uh, incomplete obturations, having voids. And there are studies on this. So you want to seal the complete root canal system, not just the canal. You want to seal the canal system. And so aside from voids not looking good, 
and someone one day down the road saying, who the heck operated this thing and having an issue with it, um, you want to have a complete fill of the canal system. So um, thank you for asking that, that question. And, and uh, Tyler was, uh, I just opened Tyler's question, how do you manage canals that join together apically? Um, so I think I just answered that one. Uh, another question he had was, how do you manage canals that are, uh, that have a sort of like a figure eight configuration? Mm -hmm. And so um, in, in a case like that, um, what, uh, what you do, and I only have so much time tonight, but if you have a figure eight uh, uh, obturation or an ovoid even, what I personally like to do is I use, again, for argument's sake, let's say I use a red wave one and I use that in that, that ovoid canal and I go back and forth and, and brush the walls. On one side of the canal, I'm gonna use a master um, corresponding cold paper point that corresponds to that, got to, to that uh, wave one. So I'll put that, let's say, on one side of the canal for argument's sake. It's gonna go on this side, <coughs> excuse me, and then on the other side where I'm left with that space, I'm gonna put my uh, red corresponding gutta core and fill the empty half of that ovoid uh, canal with that gutta core. And that will flow into that space and around the cold coin beautifully. Uh, in fact, for, for many of these questions that you have, that specific point I actually have uh, in the uh, chair time, chairtime.com that uh, Tulsa has, where I actually have a link, like a, a one minute segment about how do you fill ovoid canals. So. Uh, thank you for that. And and then anything I may have covered or uh, you may have missed, feel free to go even. I'm not trying to put a plug for me because you might be sick of this face by now. Uh, but you can go on Tulsa's website on chairtime.com or just Google, you know, uh, Dr. Manor Haas and gutta core obturation. And whether it's on YouTube or on the Tulsa website, you'll see two or three minute clips of many of the questions that have been asked. Um, so someone was asking... Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. Yeah, and, and again, I'm not trying to put a plug for that, but you might be in the middle of obturating or you might have a patient and five minutes before and mm -hmm. during your day, you might not be sure about something. No joke. You go on your smartphone, you go on your computer in your office. Uh, it takes two minutes for most of these and you'd be amazed how, how easy it is to see all these points I've mentioned on their, on their chairtime.com website. Um, there's another uh, person that was asking, are the color-coded gutter cores used also for corresponding ProTaper next files, wave one? Absolutely. You could use them on ProTaper Universal, ProTaper next, ProTaper Universal Gold, uh, gutter cores, um, uh, uh, wave one. They're all color-coded. So it doesn't mean it's only for yellow, red, or black. They have other sizes, uh, green, you name it. Uh, let me see another question over here. Oh, yeah, so there's uh, Muhammad was asking, uh, do the colors of the of the pro taper universal match the gutta, the pro taper gold? It's yep. This is 2014. Remember, I, I love it when things are simplified. Tulsa has done that. If one of my 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 two catches was, can you color code? Can you color match these things? So absolutely. Whether you're using pro taper gold or universal, those colors will match the gutta, the corresponding gutta core. It's sweet and simple. You don't need complications in your life. Um, and let me, let me see, I think, oh, let me see if there's any more, pardon me. Um, yep. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, let me find his again. Oh. Yes, so divergent, well, divergent canal is a little bit different. If we're talking about, um, let's say, immature apices, and we're talking about uh, canals which they don't converge apically, but they open apically, well, that's a whole other ball game. I'm on staff at a teaching hospital, at a children's teaching hospital. Uh, I treat uh, very complicated pediatric cases. That is the one exception where I would say you may not want to use warm obturation because you have less control of it apically. You don't want this thing to extrude. Um, that's where it's a whole other lecture. Um, if ever you see me lecture one day, I'll tell you about it. But 
Um, that's where you, I, I would even use MTA and thank goodness for MTA uh, nowadays. So I, I don't recommend that for those sort of odd cases. Uh, let me see if there's, hang on. Um, and, oh, there, sorry. Yeah, so thank you. So uh, Derek was asking, can you use gutta core with the twisted file adaptive filing system? Um, great question. I, I, you know, these things are meant to correspond with one another. I, you might be able to, you would need to use your, I would recommend you use your 06 taper uh, files um, and then it might correspond to it. You may have to go maybe one size smaller. I think you might be okay there, but uh, it, it's, it's really designed to work seamlessly when you're using corresponding files and, and operators. You know, I'm, I'm an iPhone guy and I'm a Mac guy. Well, you know, it's meant to interact perfectly. I don't need complications in my life. If operation is, assist, is an issue for me, I want to use the corresponding operation. But again, having said that, um, you know, I don't, I've used Twisted File Adaptive. I don't use it anymore. But uh, if you use a Twisted File Adaptive, I would recommend you use the larger size maybe downsize the gutta core. Um, but you see, when I start giving answers with maybe, and I think, and probably, I I'm not that comfortable. Uh, you know, do you, do you want to experiment when, when it's, you know, with all due respect, your, your mom or your dad or your brother and sister in a chair, do you want someone saying, well, I think, or maybe, probably, or we should do, you know. Um, so, you know, it's, it's one of those things, if you're a twisted file adaptive person, um, then you know something like uh, a wave one which is also reciprocating but even more more efficient and simplified is something that i'm sure you'll appreciate but thank you for that for that question so i hope i've answered it it probably will work but i you know i can't say definitively um oh someone was asking uh can i use a, a pro gt oven you probably can uh i'm not sure exactly what setting but you know it's a one-time expense I don't make any money off the sale of these ovens. I wish I did. Um, I'd be in Hawaii right now if I did. But but I do recommend this new generation of ovens. It's really meant to work with this system seamlessly. So it's something I would recommend uh, you, to do it properly, to have it warmed up properly. That's uh, what I would recommend. And let me see. I think. Yeah. Well. Thank you. Well, if I may, thank you. Views or comments about the presentation tonight in the Q and A pod, feel free to. I'd love to show our folks here how much you enjoyed it. And again, please remember to do your quiz and eval forms for us as well means a lot to us. So Dr. Haas, I'll let you wrap us up. Just so everyone knows, I'll leave the room open even as Dr. Haas wraps up. So if you need to download things or whatever, feel free to. I won't shut down for another five or ten minutes. Yeah. Thanks, no, Dr. thank Haas. you very much, John and, and Tulsa and everyone. Uh, it, this is brilliant. Here we are and you know, Monday evening and we have people from around the world. Um, really, thank you very much to all of you. If you have any questions, I know John will give a link for that somehow could, could reach me with any questions. You're more than welcome to. Um, so with, from the poll that I saw earlier, a lot of you had issues with un being unable to fill uh, to length, being unable to or, or spending too much time on their operation, unpredictable outcome. I, I hope I've answered those issues that, that uh, you've had by showing you this system, um, which is an absolutely brilliant system. And so uh, thank you very much to all of you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Tulsa. Mindy also in the background. And uh, I wish you guys a, a great night from uh, all over the world and uh, all the best to you guys from Toronto, Canada. So thank you very much. Thank you, doctor. And as I said, I'll leave the room open for a while. I'm actually about to put Dr. Haas's email since he offered it into the Q&A pod. So it'll pop up here in a second for you all if you want to uh, send him anything. But uh, as I said, we're going to allow you and Dr. Haas to log off if you wish. I will keep the room open for another five minutes if you need to grab anything. And uh, thanks, everyone. Good evening. And uh, we'll let you know about the next events. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you.